Right, okay, so what we're going to do is we're starting looking at double angle formulas. So what we've been working on so far has been, we've been looking at the expansions of um, sine and cos when we've got um, two angles added together, so compound angles. And from those compound angles, we can move on to look the double angle formula. They're on the screen already, you've got sine 2a equals 2 sine a cos a. And you've got cos 2a equals cos squared a minus sine squared a. Cos 2a also has two other variants that we can get, which are 2 cos squared a minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Like with the compound angles, this is all about kind of manipulating the expressions and getting them in such a way that we can get a value for our answer. But first, before we do that, I'm going to just briefly show you where these come from. So the sine 2a, we can think of that as being the sine 2a is just a plus a. Yeah, so this is just a little proof of where these come from. You don't need to remember the proofs. You're given these in the formula sheet, but I think it's a good thing for you to see kind of where they're coming from so that you understand that this isn't anything new. It's just kind of an expansion on what we've been doing so far. And we know that if we've got sine of a plus a, we can rewrite that as sine a cos a plus cos a sine a from our compound angle of compound angle formula. And it doesn't matter which way round our sine and our cos are, as long as they're, if they're multiplying, it's the same thing. So that's just two sine a cos a. Okay, so that's where that one comes from. And then cos 2a, it's just a very similar thing. It comes from the fact that we think, well, that's cos of a plus a. So then with our compound angle formula, we know that's cos a, cos a, take away sine a, sine a. So cos a, cos a is cos squared a and then take away sine a times sine a, which is sine squared a, and there we go. And the other two come from a little bit of manipulating and knowing that cos squared a plus sine squared a equals 1, which is one of our expressions that we should have learnt at National 5, but that is something we know, and you can just kind of rearrange that and substitute it in, and it gives you your two other values for cos 2a, which can be really helpful because sometimes you only want one of the two um, symbols. You don't need them both. You don't want both cos and sine. You just want one or the other. Right, so I'm going to go on to do some examples using these, and that will be us for the double angle formula. Right, so for our first example, leaving the formulas up there for us to help, we're going to find the exact value of sine 2x, or 2 theta even, where theta is an acute angle with tan theta equal to 5 over 12. Right, so we need to find the exact value of sine 2 theta. So for the sine ones, it's easy. There's only one to pick from. It's got to be 2 sine a cos a. So we get 2 sine a, but this time it's theta because it's theta in our question, cos theta. Right, so we need a value of sine theta and cos theta. We know what tan theta is, so we can kind of create a little triangle to help us out. So it's a little right angle triangle, got theta in there, and we know that tan of x is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So we know the opposite is going to be 5, and then the adjacent is going to be 12, and this is where Pythagoras is going to have to come in. So we know to find the hypotenuse, um, the hypotenuse, oh, what's going on? 
me a second, sorry. Right, the hypotenuse is going to have to be equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared, which, when we put in our calculator, gives us 13, so we know we've got a 13 there. So, from here, we can then find that sine of theta is sine is so, so opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite is 5, the hypotenuse is 13. And we know that cos theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that's going to be 12 over 13. So now that we've got those values, we can put those into our equation over here. So we know that sine theta is just 5 over 13. And we know that cos theta is 12 over 13. So 2 times 5 over 13 is 10 over 13. And then you times that by 12 over 13. And when you multiply in fractions, you multiply the top two and you multiply the bottom two. So 10 times 12 is 120. Then on the bottom, we've got 13 times 13, which is 169. And that's our answer. Okay, so we'll go on and we're going to do another kind of more complicated example for you. Okay, so for our second example, what we're going to do is we're going to find the exact value of cos 2a. if sine a is equal to negative 12 over 13. Um, right, so for this question, we have to use the double angle formula for cos. So this time in the question, we've been given sine. We've not been given cos. Because of this negative, we don't really want to draw the little triangle doesn't really work. So we're going to have to pick one of these three. And really only one of these three makes any sense. And that's kind of how these questions are going to go, is you've got to pick the one that makes the most sense. So because we've got sine, we want to pick the one that has sine in it. So we have 1 take away 2 sine squared a. So then we get 1 take away, and that's going to be 2 times negative 12 over 13 squared. So here comes a little bit of bod mass. So we get the 1, take away, the 2 stays the same, and then we've got to square bracket. Because it's negative, when we square anything that's negative, it becomes positive. So square 12, you get 144. If you square 13, you get 169. And that's that line. So then we're going to have 1 take away. And then we're going to have to do 2 times this. So we're going to get 288 over 169. Because you multiply the top by 2, you don't multiply the bottom by 2. The bottom stays the same. And then we can do that as... I'm going to come and bring this over here because I've run out of space. So that's the same as like 169 over 169 take away the 288 over 169 and then honestly there's nothing wrong if you've not got a calculator just doing a little calculation to find what number we should get so we get 9 1 1 so we get negative 119 over 169 right so there all I did for the calculation over here was because we've got 169 take away 288, we can kind of flip them over and then make our answer negative. Because the whole point of this question is that you wouldn't have a calculator because you're finding an exact value. You probably won't have a calculator. So being able to do that little calculation over at the side, doing it like that, nothing wrong with it. In higher, if do what you've got to do to get the answer, basically. If you've got to do little subtraction sums and all that kind of stuff in the margins over at the side, that's fine. Don't rub them out, just leave them there, there's nothing wrong with it. Okay, so with these we can get a bit more complex and we can kind of mix this in with the stuff we've already been doing. So, we could have if a 
is an acute angle and we know that cos of A is equal to 3 fifths. We want to calculate sine of 3A. Okay, so this is combining both the double angle formula and the stuff we've done before with the compound angles. But first thing to start with is we know that cos of that angle A is 3 over 5. So cos is adjacent, so that's our 3, that's our 5. This is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, Pythagorean triple. So we know straight away. So we know that sine A is going to be 4 fifths. Cos A is 3 fifths, and not that we're going to need it, but tan A is opposite over adjacent, so 4 thirds. Yeah? So we've got that information, it's there. So if we think about it, our sine of 3A, in terms of a compound angle, we can think of that as sine, and then we can split it up as 2A plus A. Because 3 is just 2 plus 1, so we can kind of split it like that. So then we can think of that as being, we can kind of do our long thing. So it's sine 2a cos a plus, and then it's going to be cos of 2a sine of a. Just from our general formula before that we know, which I'll put up here as a wee reminder. So a plus b is equal to sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. So that's all I did there. But instead of having a and b, you've got 2a and a. So we know some of these values, but we don't know all of them yet. So we need to find out what sine of 2a is. And we'll need to find what cos of 2a is, but I'm not sure how much space I'm going to take, so I'm going to leave it for now. So sine of 2a, we know that's 2 sine a cos a. So 2 times sine a is 4 fifths, cos a is 3 fifths. Just from over here at the side, we've got these values here. Um, so then we can do 2 times 4 times 3 is 12, 5 times 5 is 25. So then you get 24 over 25. And then we've got to find cos of 2a. So cos of 2a. It's probably easiest to just use our first one. So we're going to have cos squared a minus sine squared a. And so then we're going to have 3 fifths squared. Take away 4 fifths squared. Right, so to square a fraction, you square the top and you square the bottom, so 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, take away 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, so then you've got 9 take away 16, same as 16 take away 9, so that's 7, but it's going to be negative, and then you've got over 25. So, we can now go back to our main body of our question. We know that sine a or sine 2a is 24 over 25. So we're going to have 24 over 25. Cos a is 3 fifths. And we're going to have to add cos of 2a, which is minus 7 over 25, times by sine a, which is 4 fifths. So then we multiply it out. So we've got 25 times 5, which is 125 on the bottom of our both of our fractions because the bottoms are going to be the same and then we've got 24 times 3 times the 4 by 3 is 12 so it's going to be 72 and then we've got 7 times 4 which is 28 so you've got 72 take away 28 which is going to give you just a quick again like I said nothing wrong with the recalculation um, to give you that it's 44 over 125.
Okay, so we can do these calculations for the more difficult ones. So we can split it up. You could have 3A, which you split up into 2A and A. You could have 4A, which you split up into 2A and 2A. You have 5A, which would be 3A and 2A. But the more, like the bigger it gets, the more complicated it gets. So you're going to have to do like multiple equations. So you'd have to find what 3A was before you'd then be able to use it again. So you're not likely to get those. Kind of 3 and 4 are kind of the biggest ones you're likely to get. Okay, and sometimes you're going to have to do these from um, pictures as well, but you'll get lots of practice, so don't worry. So that's it for the double angle formula, and I'll see you in class.